Hello. Welcome to the downside. A special, uh, uh, special. Uh, special. Yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. Every episode is exciting. I, uh, I'm punchy. I had a, a shoot at 3.30 in the morning. And, uh, 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 but I wanted to, you know, make time because I wanted to help. I wanted to help you get the word out, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, uh, this is uh, where people will hear about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with my co-host, Russell Daniels. Hello. Also making a very early trip. I appreciate being yes, here. Yes, yeah. And we're joined uh, with, used to be my opener, now <laughs> hopefully takes me on the road. <laughs> Ariel Elias, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm so glad I never have to drive to your place <laughs> at 4 p.m. on a Friday ever again. <laughs> if nothing else has come from this. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi. Can I tell you of all the selfish thoughts that I've had during this whole process, oh, which know you what can it imagine was. as a comedian, but 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 there was like there was this sort of like oh fuck I really liked working with Ariel on the road and no. now it feels yes what why getting, that wasn't your selfish thought no no I no I had plenty of selfish thoughts some of which you'll never hear but I, I absolutely thought I absolutely thought I thought like you're my you're like my go to. I, I was, you know, we had it was such a nice time, and I was just like, "Fuck, man, that that phase is done yeah. and fast, yeah. headlining and quick. now, baby." Yeah. Um, okay, so so for those those who have been living under a rock, because apparently everyone everyone's heard. And just to be clear, you're trying to release this today, right? So it's not oh like, yeah, this yeah, is, yeah, yeah. we're okay. trying to put okay. this out tonight. <laughs> okay. I've never done this turnaround. <laughs> yeah, I cleared yeah, yeah. the schedule, so strike it while it's hot. Yeah, I uh, I. Uh, uh, Ariel, uh, a fantastic comedian. JFL New Face is 2021. But who gives a fuck about that anymore? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, spoiler, nobody ever gave a fuck about it. <laughs> um, uh, so just to recap, and you can you can go uh, watch the video that, that she posted of this thing. Uh, I, we went to a comedy club called Uncle Vinny's Comedy Club uh, in Point Pleasant Beach. Uh, just right off the bat. Uh, deep in New Jersey, the the logo for Vinny's Comedy Club bullet, bullets in it. Which again, we're not clear. After all this, I don't know if I'm ever, but but uh, bullet holes in it. And um, the L is a gun in Uncle oh, Vinny. I didn't okay. even notice that. Okay, I didn't notice that either. <laughs> the L is a gun. I uh, uh, seemed seemed pleasant enough. Everything seemed pleasant enough. Um, we did a Friday show. Went fine. Saturday show. Uh, it's BYOB, important factor in this. Yeah. And uh, there was a table there early, about two hours early. Yeah, they got there before we did. And we got there early. Yeah. We got there at like 7.45 for a Yeah, and there's, no, con PM there's no content for them. They're just sitting there drinking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they were, the, the, the owner said uh, they were having a Mexican birthday. Don't know what and that means. Was, no one was Mexican, right? No. Like, it wasn't like, it Not wasn't like they were just a, a group of Mexican people and they're like, we could Maybe just say birthday. Some, <laughs> sometimes you can't tell, like, Louis C.K. is Mexican, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, but yeah. as far as we could see. No, okay. no, no. And what did that entail? Did they have, they, they had, uh, things? there was a sombrero, oh. which the owner told them no hats. So there were rules. There yeah. were rules. Believe it or okay. not. Okay. And I'm so glad that he really, um, you know, enforced all of the comedy club rules that night. Yeah. And we were joking because they were rowdy. They were uh -huh. rowdy, rowdy, How rowdy. many people are we talking about here? Um, uh, 10, 12? I think, the, I think the whole party, he said, was 20. Okay. 20. Wow, okay. And now there's something you need to know about me, and I don't like to express, uh, you know, my flaws on the show. When I'm headlining deep in New Jersey, 20 is going to be half the audience that night. Uh huh. This is to kick out this party is to is to cut cut the audience. Cut in a half. huge crowd. It's uh, cutting like everybody sitting in the back. Yeah. Okay. It, and it's not a big club. Yeah. And although strange because what BYOB it feels like you're taking away a huge part of money I for think, a comedy club. I think the reason, and this is just from friends from New Jersey have said, I think that county is sort of dry. It's mm. like a certain classification of dry. So for whatever reason, they can't sell alcohol. I mean, I think this is all proof that prohibition does not work no. at all. <laughs> People find a way. Okay, so they're there. They're partying. They're having a Mexican birthday party. Mexican birthday. So it entailed there were sombreros. There were the women were wearing uh, fake mustaches. No. Like, like a party party city yeah, cheap. yeah yeah 
Um, they weren't authentically. <laughs> no, I, I didn't think that they had like good prosthetic <laughs> mustaches on. Um, so, so then um, we joked. Yeah. This is this is going to be a disaster. Oh my god, these drunk people. Uh, they were getting rowdy and rowdier, and we thought they'd probably get thrown out before the show started. That's how rowdy they were being. Just okay, loud. Okay. Okay. Just loud. And um, I joked. I said, "Well, if they're going to stay, I was like, oh, I hope they get thrown out during your set." And I said, um, I do too, because I have like a line ready. Yeah, okay. Like a line. Which line? What was Yeah, what was your line? I didn't say it, but my line was they were there for a Mexican themed birthday. And my line was going to be if they got thrown out of like, oh, really committing to the Mexican theme of getting kicked out. Oh, okay. I don't know if that would have gotten you on Kimmel, but <laughs> it is a good line. It's a decent line yeah. for like we where we were. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. we're in a conservative crowd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think people should be kicked out of this country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like, that's what will happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but that's how clear it was that like, okay, this is a, yeah. this is a. They're troublemakers, rabble rousers. Yeah. And it felt like we were told like, listen, people being kicked out is not an issue. So it was like, okay. Like, oh, they, they, they do it a lot. Yeah. Or, or they're not they scared to. They got it covered. They're, they got it covered. They got it covered. They got it covered. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, so host goes up. They seem to quiet down. They seem to like chill out once the show starts. I was like, okay, they great. did. One girl passed out. Well, yes, yeah, I, I said they were quiet out. You were like, oh, one's asleep. And we were like, that's best case scenario. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Yeah, that's great. Go to sleep. <laughs> and uh, then you go up. Nothing unusual. And then, uh, and I know you've recounted recount this a thousand times, but you, you should see it in the video. But basically, and I'm going to ask you this soon, who did you vote for? But who <laughs> they they asked who did you vote for? And and I'm uh, when they said that. You open you open the floor to questions for a bit. Sure. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they said, who did you vote for? No, she said, did you vote for Donald Trump? Did you vote for Donald Trump? It was not, who did you vote for? It was not Who did you vote for? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> just a yeah, polite yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. Did you vote for Trump? Which is, it was just wild. I've never, it was shocking. You could feel the air change in the room. What did you think then? I thought like, I thought this was going to like, I didn't know where it was going to go in terms of, is this going to be a heckler who's going to get need to be thrown out? Never thought right. it would move to anything being thrown. So I just thought it was not good. I was tense. Yeah. I was aware. I was, I was there. Yeah. And you just, I don't know. She just had that energy. This is, could be a sexist thing on my part where I felt like this is not going to go down smooth. This is, this is a person who's going to have to leave. They're not going to get shut down and be chill. Yeah. So then you you didn't answer. You were just like trying to move on. And then they were like, no, who you voted for Trump. <laughs> I, you voted for Biden. I can tell by your jokes you voted for yes, Biden. Yes. And now all had really been established in our set so far was that you were Jewish, mm -hmm. which you, we were we were told that could have been the whole issue. But you didn't have a set that was like, you weren't talking about politics. I didn't even really do my Jewish jokes. Like I mentioned it up top, but yeah. like I've got a whole chunk on it and I just, I didn't do it that night because that's not what I'm working on right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I will say that the day before uh, there was some jokes about, I guess there's a very Hasidic community named Le called Lakewood mm -hmm. that it sounds like uh, we were joking about. I was, you know, I was making jokes. I'm, I joke about Hasids, but then the energy in the room just felt like. Sometimes they get they were so excited to no, shit on yeah, this yeah, Hasidic yeah, yeah, community, yeah, 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 and it's yeah. always that fine line. So well, because yeah. it's that thing of like other Jews can shit on the Hasidic. No, community. it gets uncomfortable. If it's you're really hard when you're like, I sort of agree with you guys, but yeah. hang on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You are too into it. Um, you don't like them for the wrong reasons. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, how far into your set did this occur? Fifteen minutes in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, into uh, a twenty-minute set. Yes, yeah, so you were almost. Yeah. Yeah. And. So then you, you, you had the, he, she said, I can tell by your jokes, you voted for Biden. And you said, uh, I can tell I by the fact you're talking, even though no one else wants you to, that you voted for Trump. Right. Um, and I thought that video. was going to be the end. I thought that was like enough. You, and you, yeah. And, and that's it what was you, a great job. I mean, it was a great, great response. I thought, yeah, it seemed like that was And I was the like, end. great. Now yeah, we yeah, can yeah. go on. Yeah. And I think like, I think her kind of energy, the, the woman heckling, it's like, there's a, a, an okay heckler is one where you get the line and it's mm -hmm. over and they yeah. go, <laughs> oh. I've been had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she, now did he come over and kick her out? This is where I'm not sure. Did she no leave? Idea. She left or he kicked her out. He, I think he's the owner said that he kicked her out at this point. But bottom line is it felt like it was done. It felt like it was done. And I was like, 
okay, cool. Yeah. And I go back to looking at my notes. And then... And I go back into my set. Yeah. And then what? F- is it 15 seconds later? 20 seconds later? Just... I just saw the can hit the fucking... The, the wall. Yeah. And you thought on stage that it was the woman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew from back, I was like, it was, it was, a, it was a man. And, and I was like, what an arm on her. I'm so proud of her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was so impressed. I was like, that bitch played softball. Wow. And all I remember is that, like, I, I moved a little bit forward. I think the guy just bolted right away. But there was, like, people standing up. You don't know what to do. I'm looking there. I moved a little closer. And once I saw the guy had left, I ran back to make sure your camera was filming and my camera was filming because I was like, well, might as well get this. And physically, like, what else could I expect you to do? <laughs> I like that you said you moved a little closer. I yeah, No, yeah. no, I definitely, I felt like I went closer to the stage. I'm not trying to prop myself up, but it was it was a moment where you don't know, because you don't know, you don't know, is this whole table going to start throwing shit? Is yeah. there like, yeah, what yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. what is about yeah. to happen yeah. right now? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, how did the rest of the party... It, well, you heard this. it in the tape. Yeah. One guy's like, I'm never hanging out with this group again. So funny. Oh, okay. So, oh, I th- see. I thought I'd watch it. I thought he said he was never coming to the club again. So he said, <laughs> I'm never no hanging out with that group of people again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so embarrassing if you're with someone that does something like that. You know, it's oh, shocking. Well, they, they made sure to let Ariel know how embarrassed they were. I mean, honestly, credit to them. They all apologized. They all came over and were like... I mean, some of it, I think, was, like, a little bullshit of, like, we barely even know them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, but they kept saying to you, like, just being like, oh, we're so embarrassed. Yeah. And it's just. <laughs> and it's, like, it's not like there were two people at the beginning who had who were, like, rowdy, right? Like, yeah. it was everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was funny is that, like, even though the audience was very much on, like, Ariel's side and after she drank the beer, there was there was just more of them just, they were they were supportive after that. But it's funny because they probably all were still Trump people. It was a very right, kind right, of right. fine line of like, oh, don't get us wrong. We don't like that you voted for Biden. Yeah. But we're not throwing totally. shit. Totally. There yeah. was a guy in the front who, uh, after everything happened, and I like chugged the beer and I made a couple of jokes, there was a guy in the front who goes, you live and learn. And I said, to me? Are you saying that to me right now? And he goes, pretend I didn't say anything. And I go, I don't think I did anything wrong. <laughs> And then the rest of the crowd was like, no, you didn't. Wait, pretend I didn't say anything. <laughs> That's crazy. What, 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 I don't understand what he was offering for you. Like, what should you have done differently? Uh, I don't think I should have done anything uh, differently. Yeah, that's... It was so... I think one one moment, you know, after, after you posted this online, someone just commented, like, did the police press charges? And it reminded me, I'm like so... Uh, comedy clubs have uh, made my brain forget how life's supposed to work that I was like, Oh yeah, that's a <laughs> crime. What happened? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's in my yeah. head. Truly. It was just like, fuck road comedy. Yeah. yeah. This is a wild <laughs> yeah. thing. And then when I got up, I was like, Oh yeah, that's a, Cause, cause I work working at LOL for years. I just there was a thing of like the cops aren't an option. I've entered I've entered a, a, a Hunger Games like zone <laughs> because the cops were never brought into play. Yeah. yeah, every comedy club is the purge for that period of time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know it was very uh, uh, so okay. So it was it was you and you kept going in my mind. I was like, if Ariel wants to leave, all in my mind I was like, if you wanted to be like. We're going. I would have gone. Yeah, we already got paid. We already got paid. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how else I'm getting home. But, like, I was just, I was prepared for the show to be done. No, and, well, okay, the reason I did, I kept going also, in my mind, I was, like, features get paid terrible. And so I sell stickers afterwards. I sell merch. So yeah. Funny. And my merch, the my best-selling sticker is based on my closer. So I was like, well, I have to do the closer in order to sell some stickers. And I think they'll probably buy more stickers than normal. (laughs) I think people will give me more money than they normally would for this. So I was like, all right, I'll make a couple of jokes and then I'll do the closer and I'll get out. Yeah. And that's what happened. But then you, credit to you, you then had to go up and do an hour. Thank you for saying that. Which is also I crazy. don't think enough <laughs> credit has been given to me. No, I know it was, it was, uh, 
yeah, it's a weird energy to go after. Wait, did you? Re- you must have referenced it when you went up. Yeah, there. I did some jokes in the yeah. beginning and and something about like I voted for Biden and I moved around really quick. Yeah, in case anyone had to throw anything. But I, when I was up there, not that this is my trauma to feel, but I'm an anxious guy. And so I had thoughts throughout of like, oh, someone else is going to throw something. Totally. At some point I saw, sounds dumb, I saw a light suddenly and, a, a, you know, a, a spark or a vape, who knows. But I had a thought suddenly of like, it's a gun next. Totally. I mean, my opening joke that Saturday night was so glad to be here in South Jersey where it's easier to get a gun than to make a left hand turn. <laughs> like, like it wasn't. It's not out of the realm to think that somebody there had a gun on them. Yeah, of yeah. course, not well, at all. Especially with the logo having gunshot. Right. And, and like sure. A gun in the thing. That's not even part of the logo. Like, That's yeah. just missed shots from over <laughs> <Yeah>. the years. <laughs> uh, so, so, you know, I, I saw you after and, and. You gave me a hug. I, I gave I you a hug. Of course. I think it's like. Yeah, it's one of those things. I, you know, there's part of me. There's, I think, as like, as like a man in that situation, I'm like, oh, should I, should I have done more? What more should I have done? I mean, people talk about the comedy club. I thought you, you, at least in in Newsweek, really gave the comedy club saying like, I think they, there's not much more they could have done out the gate because some people were like, comedy clubs should have more security. Yeah, no doubt they should. Yes, every every comedy club should have a security guard. There's a also bouncer. a degree where I'm like the. I'm like, it's never going to happen. Or at least some of these clubs, they operate so... It's it's like saying every bar in New York should have a security guard. Or even if there was a security guard there, like, this moment happens so fast. Right, right, right. Uh, that it, but, you know, it's it's really in your hands to decide. You know, you, you could go, fuck this fucking... Cl-. You could. <laughs> yeah. And everyone would go, huzzah. Yeah, yeah. But I also... I mean, that's the thing. It's like, if she had gotten kicked out earlier... I don't know that her boyfriend or husband still wouldn't have thrown that beer can. You know, right. like absolutely right. Like right. I don't think there was any like preempting that because nobody could have predicted that that was about to yeah. happen. And he didn't say anything either, right? Like he just threw no, it. No, like that's he, why I thought it know. was her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was so funny because I guess whoever this guy was, he's a he's a jeweler. The guy who threw it. Oh, really? Because this couple came up and they're like, I don't, I barely know this guy. He's my jeweler. He look, he got me my wife's ring, and then sh- you know showed off the ring that the guy <laughs> who just threw the can. Wait, how old? Are and I was like, how well, old is, he is pretty how tough. Old are these people? Listen, if he wants to make it up to you, he should give you a big fucking diamond ring. Uh, these how I'm not great with ages. It I would a, say thirty. It was a thirtieth birthday party. Oh, okay. I know that. Uh-huh. okay. 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 Um. So, yeah, it was just a situation where, like, I knew from a very cynical point where I was like, it's good that I think of all the the moments that have not been captured on film. Of oh, yeah. same. Film. I immediately was like, this is going to make an amazing clip. And yeah. we and that's why we get along. We both I think we both are, are cynical people. We're cynical. We're a little business minded. We're like, let's 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 take advantage of whatever we can in this business because they're going to take advantage of us. And we, we were talking about it. I mean, we were talking about it in jail. These, we had some long trip there. Uh, we were talking just about, yeah, you know, Friday, Ariel said, let's leave at 2 p.m. I said, for a 9 p.m. show, please, let's do it later. We, we left at 4 p.m. Huge mistake. We were in Manhattan for three hours yeah. solid. Yeah, you left at rush hour. Yeah. Yeah. We we're, we're, we hadn't gotten to the tunnel yet at like 7.30 p.m. Oh, I thought we were going to miss the 9 p.m. show. I was he, like, oh, my God. John Marco goes, you think we're going to make it? And I go, I don't know. But you see, you understand why I wanted to leave it, too, right? And he goes, yay. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, yes. So you we got it on film and we talked about it. We were talking just about business in general. You, you know, it was so funny because we were you. You had asked me like, you know, is a PR person something I need necessarily? And I was like, this is like you know, on the way down, it's on, on the, the way, way down. down. And I was like, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's like <laughs> this is useful right now. And meanwhile, a day later, I'm like, like writing my PR back. person. I'm like, okay, listen, I know this is kind of tangential to me, but I need to put you in touch with Ariel. CNN wants. So when it when it happened, could you have predicted at all? No, I knew it would be a. A hit. I didn't know also that, like, time wise, this, this is how fucked up it is. Like, it's a no cut video. It's a straight, it's a straight shot. And it, it tells, it, like, uh, Tovo was saying, like, it could be studied in, like, in class because it hits, like, every fucking point. 
<laughs> you had a good joke in there. You had like right. a strong yeah. burn in there. You had. I had one about me, one about her. One about you, one about her. You had. Uh, it's political. It like captured something that, yes. of course, yeah. And you know, there's there's a, there's a couple comments where I'm like, enough, focus on Ariel, enough of the there's, politics. There's been enough conversation in the in on Twitter enough about comedians and and Chris Rock slap and like Chris so Rock slap, like all that kind of like stuff that's happened yeah, yeah, yeah. in the recently. My husband was like, everybody will use this for what they want to use it for. Yes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And and then it ends with the spear chug, and it's just like it is, it is a perfect, it is just perfect. Um, and w- I remember you, we had talked and you were like, I was like, let me know when you caption it up. I'll, we'll, I'll share it, all these things. Uh, and you're like, yeah, I think I'll have it by Monday. And then Sunday morning, when I saw that you had it up Sunday morning, I was like that for me, I was like, I was like, good. <laughs> because it was like, it was like, yeah, this is the moment where you s- did. Right. Now, did you do it that night or did you do no, it no, that no, I morning? Did it the next morning. So I got home last, I got home that night and you had like. You had post. I mean, it's incredible that this is what it took for you to tell your followers to follow me. But <laughs> now, wait. To be fair, to be fair, I've 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 always been a retweeter of you. Yes, yes, I've, yes. I've been a, I've been an ally. Sure. Yes, of course. Always, <laughs> always on my team. Um, but but you you know you like made a couple of stories about it, and also I don't know that I would have thought to put it on Twitter because Twitter. I used to love Twitter, and then I kind of gave up because I was just like, all right, people don't like the, my written word. So I had like moved on to Instagram. I don't know that I would have thought. And I didn't know. I started with Instagram and then I put basically what I put on Instagram. I put on Twitter with the picture, which was just a good picture because you could see the residue of the beer off the thing. Yeah. So you put the picture and I and I retweeted it and I was just like, also to answer the most obvious question, I did chug the beer that was thrown at me and it got enough that I was like, oh, okay, I shouldn't wait until Monday. Also, I didn't sleep Saturday night. Um, yeah, of I haven't slept <laughs> in a few days. Um, but so I woke up and I still had like all of this adrenaline. Like I took a sip of coffee and I was just like, can't do it. That was yeah. a huge mistake. So I was like, all right, maybe this will help me feel better. Also, like it is kind of the only way I can watch myself is if I have a task with it. Yes. And last night when I got home or not last night, Saturday night when I got home, I watched the video and I was like, oh, that was thrown very, very hard. I don't think it had, I don't think I had like really processed how hard that was thrown and yeah. like what would have happened if it had hit me. Like it, the video clip too, like if it had hit you, like it's not a fun, like th- it's not like this thing that it turned into now where you're like, you get a good joke, you miss, and then you get to like chug the beer right, and right, have right. this win. Like there's like a really upsetting thing that like if this had happened and it was it hit you on video and then you're sharing it, like you're not even. Not necessarily the 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 level of stuff that you're getting from it too. Right? You know, no, like, it's like if it's it, a, this a wildly upsetting thing. It misses me. It's great for my career, yep. and it's like a fun viral clip. It hits me. It's evidence. Yeah. But and in in the moment, like I I try to say this, it's like it was not funny at all. No, it was no, no. really no. It's, it's it was it's, really it's just scary. Yeah. It was a scary thing. The the rules of society had been broken. Yeah. yeah. And it was just like, it was horrifying. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So Saturday morning I woke up and like, it was just, I was Sunday just like, morning. Su- Sunday morning. Yeah. Sorry. So I woke up and I was just like, I'll just do this now. Let me do this now while I'm still like thinking about it. And then I just put it out. Yeah. And I think uh, you've, you've done it, You've done it so well because like, there's just, I don't know. You've, you've just, you've like, you haven't gone. I mean, this is all very like, boring social media stuff <laughs> but like you could have retweeted fucking every goddamn thing you've just been very like uh selective and you've had everything's had a hard joke and that's the thing i mean there's there's plenty of people where it would have just become you know about the dangers blah 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 but you've been joking the real comedian <laughs> the comedian route and i have nothing but respect for it and you know it's it's crazy i mean i'm amazed i thank you for doing this yeah, yeah. i i i feel like you it's just must have been crazy navigating all. I, I've I've had a couple things, you know, go viral in a way where you're like weird people are reaching out and you don't know what's what. People want to license your fucking video <laughs> and you're like, yeah. what does that they even are mean? Aggressive, of course, yeah. because it lasts. It's it's a couple days and everyone's feeding off it. They they do. It's so horrible to see how like BuzzFeed was one of the first articles and then every article after that is just quoting the BuzzFeed article yeah. and you're like. 
what are you doing? You just yeah. are repurposing what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know it's big because my mom contacted me asking me if I'd heard about it because she saw it on CNN and The View. And I was like, wow, that for my mom to find out about a viral video who's not online, you know, that's big. Which, were there any that were particularly, like, cool? Valerie Bertinelli retweeting it was very cool. Now, who is that? She is an actress. She's, like, lifetime goddess. Like, she's uh-huh. in, like, every Lifetime movie. I think she was also in, like, a regular show when she was a kid. Um, like, she was on, like, Days of Our Lives or sure. something else. Okay. But she's, she's like, lifetime movie queen. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, uh, okay, I'm a big Survivor fan. Oh, my God, which, what Survivor? Wendell. Have you gotten to that one yet? I don't know. It's, I don't know. Um, he's, a, he's a great winner. Sorry, spoiler. He, com- he just, like, commented on the Instagram post, just saying, like, wow. And I was like, ah! <laughs> what <Wendell! laughs> I mean it's I saw what were the I saw George Takei that that's when we knew it. we were like once once the George Takei's get yeah. I'm like oh the shit the ones that just like you know when I, I had to follow back Elijah Wood that was pretty <laughs> crazy wow. <laughs> oh that's so that's fucking funny so funny um are you gonna get a get a PR person now <laughs> Get a PR person now. Uh, yeah, how soon How soon was that all from you posting Sunday morning to then realizing, oh, this is going to be much bigger than, like, I thought? Pretty fast. Like, within hours? I think, like, well, so the first was BuzzFeed. That was the first um, contact, and I was like, okay, yeah, cool. And then Rolling Stone, and I was like, okay, oh, Yeah, that's cool. a different league. BuzzFeed yeah, is, Buzz like, cool. Feed, cool. No Rolling offense. Stone Rolling different. Stone, wow. Um, huge fan, but, uh, and then... I got an email that was like, can you do CNN this morning? And then like a couple of other things. Yeah. Where I was just like, okay. How have those things been like doing CNN? Like what? Well, I feel really bad. I mean, that was the first one was like yesterday morning and I'm not a morning person at all. And so I was, I was probably like, not like peppy and like ready to be funny yeah, yet. Yeah, so yeah. it's not like the, be- I mean, it was, it was like fun and cool, but also I realized I'm still also like processing what happened. There hasn't really been enough time and I haven't had like a moment to myself. So I was after the CNN interview, I was on the train going to walk dogs. Um, <laughs> that is- and I, took a moment to do a quick little free write where I was like, how am I feeling right now? I'm feeling irritated. Why am I feeling irritated? And I was like, I think I'm feeling irritated at some of the attention. And then I was like, well, why am I feeling irritated at the attention? That's not bad, right? Like that in and of itself, it's also like part of what I want. Like I'm a comedian. I want to be able to sell tickets and not fucking pick up Gianmarco at 4 p.m. Like that's what I, that's what I want. So I'm, I'm realizing like a lot of it is misplaced I think I still I still haven't cried, and I know I need to because there's. I've still cried three <laughs> times since. <laughs> Unrelated. When when Kimmel said, uh, "Yeah, do late night on my show," <laughs> 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 I cried. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna have to learn how to drive. Um, yeah, that's I. I think what's so surreal is just like, and this is the name of the game with the internet. It's kind of the deal with the devil, where it's like. Think of all the things you've done as an artist leading up to this point. And like this is this is one of these moments where like you having all those years in comedy are the reason you're able to do that. Yeah. There's totally. there's yeah. viral versions totally. of this where no joke is made, where it's just a beer. Right. I've I said like, yeah. man, if someone threw that beer at me, I would not have checked. I would have been like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Get the fuck. Like it would not have been fun. So it would yeah. not have been funny or anything. Or, I, uh, I, uh, but it is kind of, you know, you, you did JFL New Faces, which is like this big. It's a huge thing for a comedian. Yeah. And then this thing happens, and it's like suddenly everyone knows you, and it's for this one moment. It's very bizarre. I was telling, I was talking to my husband about it. Of like, I feel like a lot of female comedians only go viral when they're like abused publicly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, f- famously, I mean, the, the one that comes to mind the most um, is, oh, my God, I'm so bad with names. Help me out. 
uh, uh, well, I'll tell you Harvey who- Weinstein. Kelly oh Bachman. yeah, Kelly Bachman. Kelly Bachman. Yeah. Kelly Bachman. Uh, for people who who didn't see that one, uh, which funnily enough. I was I was invited to be on that panel of artists. It was in my Facebook unread messages, and I didn't see it. <laughs> so so uh, uh, it, it was a talent night where you know, kind of a mix of a bringer or something. It was some some low talent night, and Harvey Weinstein, like truly, like right after everything. Not even right after, like after it was processed, and this is a bad like guy. He had charges against. He's him. going to jail soon. <laughs> yeah, was one of the judges. Um, uh, and you know, was there's he a judge or he was just there. He was one of the judges. And that's what Holy this message shit. that I got was like, it, it, I saw it two weeks later. Uh, do you want to be one of the judges for this, this thing? Um, Wait, and you would have been a judge do you think with you were, Harvey Weinstein? Or do you think you were replaced by Harvey Weinstein? I mean, perhaps, perhaps I didn't make it. And that's why Harvey, but I know, I think I would have been like sitting next to Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> that- and and that went crazy. Which uh, is your hand constantly on his thigh, <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> I mean, I think you know. Obviously, I can't help but th- I I had thoughts after. I was like, what if I had been there? What would I have been in that situation? I wouldn't have been the guy going like boo to Kelly, boo. But yeah, but, but like you know, there was a comic that night. <laughs> this was like a comic, at least from what I read. It was like someone out of Florida who came to New York and he got a show in New York. He'd been in comedy for one year. And so he went up and like, he was like, I, uh, uh, are we going to address the, the elephant in the room? <laughs> Harvey? Uh, nah, no, it's all good. Like, he just didn't it. know what yeah. to, he yeah. didn't even know what to do. That's a terrifying yeah. experience. Well, I mean, because especially, like, imagine if you were on that panel and you had no idea that until you got there that Harvey Weinstein was going to be on the panel with you. What do you do at the time? You're like, you know, because you could be like, it could be like m- minutes before the show and then they're like, and the rest of the panelists, Harvey Weinstein, you know, like, it's a. Uh, I've gone through it in my mind. <laughs> You I've gone through though, it. I don't know that you're giving yourself enough credit. Yeah, I don't think so either. I've had, I remember, and I won't say the name of the place, but there was a, a club that wanted to book you where the owners have had allegations about them of how they have handled sexual assault and they've done some shady ethical stuff. And you asked me, and it's from a, from a, from like where I started stand up. And so you asked me like, what do you know about this place? Cause they've reached out. And I said, and I sent you all the articles and I told you, and I said, like, nobody would be mad at you for doing this. Like, I don't think it's up to comedians to give up work because of the bad behavior of others. Like, we're struggling. And you said, you thought about it and you said, I don't think I'm going to take it. I think, like, the, it, I wouldn't be able to really, like, sleep. And I, I think if I'm not willing to give this up now, you know, one day, like, these decisions will get harder and I should yeah. be able to make this decision now. So, like, give yourself you've, some credit. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you for down, not naming it because I'm performing there next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've turned down other jobs before, too. Like, I I can think of one, not because of sexual assault yeah. stuff, but other things that I can think of a job that you thought yeah, was really exciting. I, there's certainly and some decisions. And then there's other decisions where I'm like, you know, some people in L.A. are like, don't work the improv or the laugh factor because Chris D'Elia performs there. And, like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're all making these, these decisions and – it was the same with COVID. I mean, there was COVID and like life was returning back and every comedian had to deal with where it's one of these things where like our moral decisions get like all this highlighting cause it's cool and interesting, but we're also like a lot of us not being paid very much at all. Right. Yeah. So it's like such a weird focus. And, and, and when it was, I mean, we, we could, I could bring up the, the Seth thing, right? Totally. That there, there was, there was a thing where, uh, a journalist, uh, a, I'm not one of those, a comedy journalist. He's a comedy no, journalist. He's, he's a comedy yeah. journalist. And and was, was you know, some places were, oh, were coming back. They were performing in New York mm-hmm. at some point during the COVID pandemic. Oh, yeah. It was like and, October 2020 or like, like September, October 2020, where yeah. it was like there were capacity limits. I think it was the issue was that comedy clubs weren't allowed to be open, but restaurants were. Yes. Um, yeah. So, so it was one of these things of like, this is not totally logical. And trivia nights were this. okay. Right. So if yeah. you said it was a trivia, so it was one of these things where you're like, okay, we're really in the weeds of, and, and this, this journalist talked about one particular comedy club and they, they named the comedians performing there. And so, uh, some of them were like, you know, nationally touring headliners with big followings, but then they also named you. And I, I was, I, I probably stupidly tweeted at the guy because I was like, 
this is insane yeah. that you're naming. This would be like going to every restaurant that's opening right now and doing what 50% as opposed to 25% capacity yeah. and naming yeah, the like, servers here are the, here are the, and right. naming the here bus are the dishwashers. Like, yeah. You know, like, yeah, can you believe that they're doing this right now? Yeah, right. We're yeah. not in this like privileged position as, as, co as yeah. comedians. It's like, yeah. why don't you ask like, why are we not getting more support as human beings who are out of work yeah. who feel forced to make this decision between their safety and their rent? Like, like that's the... And there's just some weird like tying. There's like they see us like somehow in the same plane with the Chappelle's. It it all becomes we're the class of comedians. Yeah. And it's just like there's, it made me so mad. Um. So just remember, I've been a fan since way back. I. <laughs> uh, but, but yes, I think that the, there was obviously a similarity between like the the Kelly Bachman video and this video, and that I tried to make it about myself. But <laughs> <laughs> what was there a different one you were thinking of? I was of? thinking of Beth Stelling. Who had already Tell me that one. I don't know that well, one. Well, she had already been working for a long time and like had things under her belt and I is like so funny, but she put out when she was her ex-boyfriend when he had when he had raped her and she had photos of the aftermath and she posted it and it went viral and it was huge and it was like she's been working and she's so funny for so long. Yeah. And like like why is I, I mean, I understand why. I understand why that it gets attention. But it's still, like, kind of heartbreaking and disheartening that, like, that we can name two other women who have gone viral for this. Yeah. Uh, and it's just this, uh, obviously, with with women touring, it's hard. I mean, I've, I've seen, I've just seen, like, you see the club lineups. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes I was saying, I, I joke just about the, the upcoming slate at, at this particular club, but almost every club in the country, where, like, if there's any, like, men or especially straight white men complaining about work and, like, oh, it's too di – everyone's diversifying. I can get jobs. It's like, well, on the road, it is still very much, like, a men's game. And it's 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 that these incidents are the thing that seem to vault people up to this status – I don't know. It's just so interesting because I, I was very interested about like the women who came up to you after the show. They just had a very interesting like it's unacceptable what happened it's in a way where like they didn't make it known in the moment, but they wanted to let you know like we're together in this. And it's just interesting because you hope those same women come and see you headline. Right. When you go out there next time. Sure. There's just a strange lack of support going to the actual show but excitement in the moment of the clip. I mean, first of all, where, where, what was your, how many Twitter followers did you have before this started? <laughs> like less than 6,000. Less than 6,000. And what are you at right now? A uh, hundred and something thousand, like 105, I think. What do you, I know you're in the middle of it. Yeah. Like what's your, what's your, what's your thought of like, oh, how do I navigate this wave? How do, I mean, would you have any thought or, or, or guiding light or you just it's moment by moment you're trying to not make a fool? I think I'm trying to think long term uh -huh. of, OK. There are people who have found me from this who will probably think of me as like the beer chugging, heckling owned comedian. And like I can be that, but that's not who I am in stand-up right mm -hmm. like I write jokes I think I'm pretty clever and I'm hoping so I know some people will drop off once they realize that like that's the kind of comedian I am like I'm not fun <laughs> you know what I mean? like I'm not I very rarely drink um or that I, I think about you had that COVID joke that was so funny about um, where they were checking our IDs everywhere <laughs> and the vaccine card. And you were like, it makes, what was it? You wish they put a chip I in the vaccine. I wish they had just microchipped us. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, every time I have to fumble for my wallet <laughs> and my and my vaccine card, I'm just like, God, scan me like a lost golden retriever. <laughs> and I think any good comedian who gets this kind of popularity, they're eventually going to do a joke that that the like the happy go lucky people would be like that's mean or yeah, yeah. that's not <laughs> yeah, good yeah, yeah. wait yeah. and uh, you know that's just that's just the 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 wave you take totally. I mean but my hope is that the people like my hope is that I will like find my audience and my audience has found me 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, that's like, I mean, that's all any of us hope for, right? Yeah. Like in stand up. It's just like you do these rooms where you just struggle and it's brutal and you're just trying to get through. And then you'll do a room where you're like, oh, these are the right people yeah. for me. This is perfect. This was so fun. I was able to relax on stage and like find these new tags and work. And it's like, and they get me. So the hope is that there's just more people who like will get me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but not in a malicious, not in a threatening way. Don't get me, you know, don't come sure. get me. <laughs> yeah, Russell yeah. texted me and said, if you need me to come to the show and throw a beer at you, <laughs> I'll do it. Um, what do you think you would have done if you were at a sketch show and someone threw, and a, someone beer. threw a beer and misses you? What's your, uh, what's truly, your go-to? Truly no idea. I don't think it would be meant to make a joke. I don't, I, I definitely think, not. You're not. <laughs> I think it would be, I think it would be shock. And then I don't know. I maybe would just leave stage. I don't know what I would do. You don't you think know? I could see you attacking, like just just launching to the audience, like blacking out. I could, I could see that. <laughs> I, yeah, I could either be <laughs> complete runaway or or because uh, especially if it was a heightened kind of sketch character, you know, like one of my angry ones. Sure, you you're could an like in just character. kind of follow it, like and 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 like he gets like he's not an angry guy, but in like sketch he can really just. <laughs> access mm-hmm. it um yeah i don't know it's so shocking even when i watch that like that clip it there's something that is so stre- like it's hard to it's hard stressful. to watch the first time you're i watch like, it it's like ah no, I, no 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 i mean i can remember the times in my life where you've been in a bar and someone has done something like that like throw something or like a fight breaks out when you are in like a confined space and a fight breaks out like on the subway or it's so you're like, wait, what? Like, this is breaking the rules of society, and it's so jarring yeah. and, and upsetting. Like, you know, I don't know. It's very – there's no way to predict, I think, how you react to it. But you did a good job. Thanks. Do you wish – is there – do you wish that, like, in an ideal world, does me or the owner fucking just clock the guy? Is there a, a want for that? Uh, I don't know about clocking him. Just maybe tackling him, Uh huh. I think, just to, like – I don't know. It is really dissatisfying. Like, I'm escaped. not going to. Yeah, he just, like, got to keep drinking that night, and I had to drive home. Well, that's you why all those mean? all those people were like, I'm never speaking to him again. I'm like, you're going to have a beer with him in two hours. Right. Yeah. I yeah, know. you're all going out together after this. Yeah. Um, the cra- I think, like, most of the response has been, like, super supportive and nice. There were a couple. The, my favorite, the funniest thing is when people are like, this is obviously staged. Like, this is so pl- <laughs> As if I could plan anything. Like, I have ne- I couldn't plan, like, a, p- a party for somebody. I could never, like, have the wherewithal to, like, hire actors to come and, like, sit to Jersey. at Uncle Vinny's. <laughs> like, so funny. They yeah. may, especially, like, if the feature on the show had set up a plant for the Hilarious. show. Hilarious. Uh I mean, people will people people think fucking shootings are staged. Like right, people right, right. have some deep suspicion that anything that's that it's so weird that anything that makes sense or that anything feels like I don't know. But people clearly have this thing inside yeah. of them, and I don't know if it's the internet that did it to them or enough things that were staged. I remember when when Chris Rock got slapped. I was in a green room, and there was a comic there, older comic, who was convinced. And he wasn't like a crazy guy, convinced it was staged. And he was already breaking down, like, you see how the camera angle was this? And I was there, and I was like, there's no way. There's no way. That's crazy. It's insane. And then on, on national TV, they had Will Smith said, keep your wife's name my, out of your fucking mouth. Yeah. That doesn't, that's not how it works. Right. But people don't want to. It's interesting. Yeah. Um. Well, as I said... A glad it missed. Feels like everyone has it has to start with that. Like glad you're safe. Yeah. And I think you're you're handling whatever this insanity is That's with weird. with grace Thanks. and humor, most Thanks. importantly. Because there's just so much. You see <sighs> these Trumpers, they're part of a cult. Look at these. And I'm like, part of me is like, yeah, we all know. Right. We everyone, know everyone who agrees yeah, with you yeah. agrees That's with you at given. this point. Given, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when has that ever helped anybody get out of a cult to be like it's a cult. What yeah. you're in is bad. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not going to then be like, oh my gosh, oh my you're, God, you're right. right. You're right. It's like, no, be nice to people. Yeah. And it I'm is- not saying everybody has to be nice to Trumpers. I get it. I'm in a place of privilege. Like, they're not currently coming for me. Yeah. Um, but like, just fucking be nice to people. Just it be is- a human being. It is funny to imagine one Trump, like, big Trump fan watching this video and being convinced 
Like, oh, that is over the line. Okay, I'm getting out of this. You know, like, <laughs> just one, just one. Six years into Trump, yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah. you know what? Wait a minute, that is bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, George Takei. Yeah. January 6th. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, January 6th was bad, but this. This. Um, I feel like people probably have asked this as well as this because they asked me this outside of this they're like has things gotten worse uh ha- has like people become more divided have audiences become scarier i haven't toured enough like this was a conservative place mm-hmm. i haven't done that many of this club i've done a couple and i've said i have had three times on the road now where i just say i'm jewish and people go Ugh. <laughs> and i've always i've never i never want to I would be allergic to the idea of being like, you know, being Jewish, we're in a press group too. I would, I, but, but there is a feeling of like, and I don't know if it's just because I'm touring more parts of the South or things have changed, but that yeah. mixed with, with Kanye West tweet that night, it that just felt so like wild. <laughs> the, the Buzzfeed article just happened. I took a screenshot of it where it, it, it mentioned that you had said that you were Jewish or something. Or it was the line you said of, you know I'm the only Jew in the room here. Right. Are you trying to get me killed? And right under that was Kanye West, like, I'm going to go DEFCON 3 on the Jews. And I don't know. It, it certainly makes me think a little bit more of, like, I guess I am Jewish, and some people are weird about this. Oh, interesting. This is the first time you're thinking about that. Well, I, I didn't, I wasn't, I was raised like in a Jewish community, a very Jewish friendly right. community, and I wasn't like practicing at all. So I was like a non Jew within the community. Got it. And then we had Tova on the podcast yesterday, and I talked more just about like how she perceives me Jewish and how being with her has made me be like, I guess I'm more Jewish. Doing comedy has made me go like lean into being Jewish more. But, but you. I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I was like a practicing Jew from Kentucky. So that's always been like at the forefront of my, I mean, my nickname in high school was Jew lovingly, (laughs) like lovingly, but it was, it was just like, I mean, my best friend would introduce me to people being like, this is Ariel. She's, she's Jewish. Cause it was like exciting. It was just like, we've never had one of these before in this town. Yeah. So like, it's always, I've always been so aware of it and so aware of, I mean the, my, my joke for when I am the only, like I'll do a thing at the beat, you know, I say, is anybody else here Jewish? And when there's nobody, I go, that's fine. I'm from Kentucky. I'm very used to being the only Jew in a room. Great. So it's like, it's, I've, I've thought about it so much my whole life and it is interesting. I do think like the, there is like a shifting attitude in this country for the worse, for sure. Uh huh. Um, but it's interesting to hear a lot of like New York Jewish comedians be like, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just think there's something I've been in such liberal worlds my whole life that there's something to me almost like laugh. There's something of like, what are you talking about? When people do like the Jews, you know, run the world. I'm like, what are you talking about? We're like. We're like super like neurotic and weak and and (laughs) I don't understand what you think this threat is. Well, I was always, I was like, what are you talking about? All the Jews that I know are like professors at UK. You know what Uh I mean? They're not, they're not these like business moguls who control entertainment. It's like, no, no. They're just like, they just have PhDs. Yeah. And I don't know. I have more, more Jewish jokes that play. I was talking to Fumi Abe. I was in. Uh, I was in LA and we were at a show together and we were just talking, I was talking to him about just where we both, what is it to make a joke about a stereotype about yourself? Like, when are you being hacky and when are you being honest? Sure. And, and he was saying, he was like, he was like, I think if the stereotype is true for you, then it's not hacky because you are that thing. And when it's not, then you're pandering. And that made sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like I am a cheap Jew. Right, I love my money. girlfriend's a cheap Jew, yeah. and so there's like, well, I should be able to joke about this a little, right? But then there's other things, but it's it's tough. I mean, it was interesting just the night before that feeling I had on stage where joking about the Hasids, it was like killing, and I was like, mm, no, yeah. we're we're entering not the the right kind. The yeah. energy got weird. Yeah, it's also this thing of like, I know that like I'm a cheap Jew. Not because it's like, I'm so greedy. It's because there's like generational trauma 
of ancestors and like not that far back being kicked out of their homes and having to grab like we have a tin of cash because we're like you never know when you gotta grab shit and run Mm -hmm. like you never know when you're gonna have to bribe the guards like so so it does i mean that's where it's coming from and it's like it's again it's that thing of like i can say this right like yeah like but maybe point pleasant beach new jersey shouldn't say this. sure <laughs> yeah but that's also the thing with the internet where it's just like it'll be taken by the way seeing the article in the daily wire about about the uh, uncle Vinny's was so funny did you see that no i texted to the the daily know. wire did did an article too and it wasn't it was interesting because it like they didn't put a like a conservative spin on it. Uh-huh. There's no, there's no there's good. There's nothing you can. There's nothing you can yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was called staged. A crowd work interaction goes viral. <laughs> the Daily Wire. But it's uh, the internet. You know, you can make that joke and it's fine here. But right. the internet's for everybody, the and they'll spin it for yeah. whatever they want. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Well, well I do want to. I feel like we we covered it. Yeah. But I I I'd love to hear about. Kentucky. What do you want to hear about Kentucky? The downsides of living in Kentucky. Uh, the downsides are it's pretty boring. Um, not a ton to do there. Um, are you a sub? Do you identify as a southerner? Yeah. Which which part of Kentucky? Lexington. Okay. What does it mean to be a southerner? I think it means. Ooh, that's a good question, yeah. Gianmarco. What does it mean to be For a you? southerner? Because I'm learning it like I'm learning it like. Super piecemeal, like, you know, two days out of a month at a time. I'm in the South and I'm like, okay, what does this mean? (laughs) What are these people? What are their culture? I think it means, uh, I think, I mean, being very polite, having manners. I think Mm -hmm. that's part of it. Um, An affinity for being alone. I think that's part of being Mm. a Southerner. You're used to being isolated physically from people. Mm. Um. I think you're also, there's like a sense of community, like at the same time, which is, I guess, a little contradictory. Um, hmm. as, a, as a Jew in Kentucky, was there was there that contradiction of community of being Southerners and then lack of community because there wasn't a lot of Jews around there? I think it's kind of the opposite. It's like our synagogue was like very tight knit. Like we, we had, I, it, it's been hard for me to like join a synagogue here in New York because it never feels as close and as communal as the synagogue that I had in Lexington. Um, but at the same time, part of why it feels that way is because most of the people who go to that synagogue, when they go into their lives outside, they're the only Jew. Mm. Yeah. That so makes you're sense. alone and then you come together. And I think that's, I mean, that's very like Jewish in Kentucky. I think it's also just being Southern is like a lot of people work, on farms they work they work with their hands they do things alone and then they go to church right like the, and then they have their their community that's really interesting about why it would because i feel like you know speaking of why i find like the political discourse so boring i think we talked about on the way up about how sometimes southerners are painted in just a dumb way mm-hmm. we're like to me it's like just you saying that now i'm like oh i could see how i don't un- have an understanding of why religion is important in a different realm i say and i was doing it where i went to this gun show in florida uh and i truly was just going looking for material but like you're there and there's just a feeling of like oh right this is not just like guns that they love it's their friends and this is the excuse that they have to meet new people and they talk about guns and it's like the thing just you saying like oh yeah it's an isolated place so church means even more because that's the only time you hang out with people. It's that. It's also mm-hmm. think about like a ton. Like if if you have a community full of farmers who are, they live and die by the weather, right? Like by the seasons. That determines everything. You would believe in God too. Yeah. Or you'd be, you'd well. be really mad at the Jews for controlling the exactly. weather. Exactly. Yeah. The like weather is really important. Yeah. It's super <laughs> important. So you'd be like, yeah, there's been a drought. Obviously, they have a weather machine. (laughs) Um, And have you been able to, I I talked with Tovi yesterday, do you miss, did you do Shabbat growing up, like Shabbat dinner? Mm, Not, not when I was younger. Once I, okay, so the year before my bat mitzvah, I had to go to services every Friday night and every Saturday morning. 
Um, that was just like my parents' rule. Yeah. It's like I had to do it because also in our synagogue, we didn't have a canter. Like it's, you know, it's a real, it's a small community. Um, and the way that we did our bar and bat mitzvahs was that whoever was the bat mitzvah or bar mitzvah kid, you led the entire service. Like you did your Torah portion and your half Torah. You also led the service. Like you were the rabbi for the day essentially. And the rabbi was there. But, like, it was you. So you had to, like, learn the service. Mm. Um, and you would, like, practice, like, the year leading up to it. So um, so once that, once the year before, I had a friend who, I still have a friend. He's still my friend um, at synagogue. His family was more religious than mine to the point where they would, they didn't, like, dr- they kept Shomer Shabbos. Like, they didn't use electricity. They didn't, they didn't, on, sh- on Shabbat. And we would walk after services on Saturday mornings. And we were 12, so it was, like, cool to, like, walk to a place, especially in Kentucky where you don't walk anywhere. Yeah. We would walk to his house. It was me, him, and another friend, his older sister. And then we would just spend the day napping and playing ping pong and reading and playing cards. And we would, like, keep Shabbat in that way. And then we would usually have a Saturday evening dinner with his family. Um, And we did that through most of high school. So my family didn't necessarily keep Shabbat, but like we sort of did. We had these little rituals. Yeah, I, I'm very envious. I wish my mom, my basically my mom, her parents told her she got I have a bat mitzvah or a sweet sixteen, and she chose the sweet sixteen, and that was like I get the it. end, the end of the heritage. The end. But it's funny because my my mom's brother, like they're they're Jewish. They were all raised with bat mitzvahs, and I go there, and I'm just like, it's crazy. This is the same family. And you never had any Jewish. Traditions? No, up? we we would do temple once a year. We would do like the Passover seder, and and like any you know, uh, theater kid, that was exciting to read <laughs> and watching other people and being like, "Oh, you fucking suck at this! You're re- <laughs> you're really killing the vibe right now." I uh, I uh, and yeah, it just wasn't. It was just birthright. I mean, like birthright. Israel problems aside, like it was it was a thing of like a late a late connection to being being Jewish. How old were you when you went on birthright? 26. Oh, right at the cutoff. Well, they ex- they expanded it to 32. Okay. They need all the good okay. press they can get. But yeah, it was it was birth my birthright was very funny because it was like we were in 25 to 26 from New York and they were treating us like we were like 18-year-olds so they'd be like you have to be back by 10 and we were like no, we're not going <laughs> to do following. that. <laughs> we're not going to do that at all. Yeah. That's so funny. Did you feel like any connection or like I not to Judaism, like I, this was a time, and I wouldn't do this now, but at the time I was still a little more like actor. I was an actor. And so like I went to the wall and I put my hand there and I really tried to get into think. character. <laughs> really think. And I'd done, I'd actually played a Jew in a, another thing, like in a, in a, sh- a short film where I had to like do the wall. So like mm. I, I tried, mm-hmm. but not to Judaism. Were you filming yourself or did you have someone else do that while you, while you, while you felt into it? <laughs> I just picture, picture you being like, with a, see that? With okay. <laughs> no, this pre, this pre, uh, pre, yeah. pre me destroying my life for social media. Um, I do think that I grew up in a progressive schools, I went to DC and I think there was a degree where I do think the idea of identifying with Jews, I consider most Jews to be white, that like, there's something where I'm like, I'm not it's like a whiteness to it that I'm like I I think I don't want to be part of this big group of white people who's excited about their this thing I think and I'm not I'm not judging I'm not like trying to use this as a judgment on it I'm saying I think from the beginning I've never been a big like ever all a group together and something even about that felt like these are white people like I remember being this wasn't a Jewish thing but being in Harlem and being in a laundromat, and and most everyone there was black, and there was another white person there, and he gave me like a nod, oh, like, no. and he, and I don't think he meant it. I don't think he meant it. I truly don't think he meant it as like a like, it's like you and me against the world, yeah. Huh? But it was just like a, it was like you know the Paul Rudd the the meme where he's like, who would have thought yeah. two white guys here in Harlem? But I remember just being like, I'm not your friend. Yeah, uh, there's no brotherhood between us. Yes, right. Yeah, I could never be. Yeah. So, so I don't know, but I've, mm-hmm. I've, I've warmed up to it, but I, and now we're in this weird place where I hear more anti-Semitic stuff and I'm like, it's, it's so complicated. It's like, 
and look like we're getting into like race conversations and like what is white and like whiteness is conditional yes and all of this stuff it's so complicated um and and i don't want to have this conversation totally recorded of but course it's imp- it's complicated it's so complicated it's like i was watching the ken burns documentary about like the holocaust like the u.s during the holocaust and it's all of this stuff of, uh, where you're like this wasn't that long ago this really wasn't that long ago and like the u.s wouldn't accept jews because jews you know they were like w- we weren't considered white then right mm-hmm. and it was like the only people who were coming to our rescue were like these jewish federations and sorry I, it's that's also like the jewish thing of like saying us and we even uh-huh. though like i wasn't there um but but it's it's this thing of like i think i think there's so much trauma in being jewish that like the only way to and what I love about Jews is we're so good at talking about our trauma. Uh-huh. Like, there is no shame in talking about it. That's we, what this podcast is. That's exactly. You're really, <laughs> you really are embracing your Judaism. Um, by calling it the downside. <laughs> it's pessimistic. It's You cynical. know what it was going to be before the downside? It was a uh, kvetch. Mm. But it was taken by a fucking Jew. <laughs> uh, I just always think, I think what's so interesting to me about like anti-Semitism in the Republican Party is I'm like Jared Kushner is like the guy at the top with your guy and he's Jewish. There's such a weird there's such a weird I'm like there's Jews that are also a part of this too. But it still exists and it doesn't make sense and I don't know what it's like, you know, someone like Jared, I'm sure they're they're just in it for extreme power and money. But like I do wonder if he has moments where he goes, "Ay ay ay, this group of people down there would kill me if they had the chance." Mm. And I don't know how they, because then I, I bet they also, there's a part of them. I remember seeing, a, uh, it was, um, someone was doing a roast of Ben Shapiro. And I'm like, how does Ben Shapiro square this? Because he yeah. wears a fucking yarmulke. He goes to temple. Right. And how does he not go, the, the, the group that loves me the most doesn't like Jews. Yeah. It's, uh, I just don't know how they square it. I don't know how they square it. I don't either. Um, well, we're having Ben Shapiro on next week, so hopefully he can clear <laughs> things up. It's going to be our most listened to episode. Um, okay. Uh, uh, let's go on to, uh, uh, did you, you saw the email, yeah, you, but yeah, you've yeah. also been, I saw it. No, but I did. See, I mean, you, I saw it this morning. I, I took a walk and I thought about things and, oh, good. I, and so, so yeah, then let's, have, let's go on to answers. our, uh, this has got to stop. This has got to stop. This has got to stop. Ariel, do you have a this has got to stop? I do. Okay, when you go to a restaurant and you ask for a glass of water, or anywhere, and you ask for a glass of water and they bring you a bottle of water. You don't like that. I don't like that. I'm asking for, okay, I'm asking for a glass because I'm trying to use less plastic. Mm -hmm. We are, especially, we are, when it happens in New York, it makes me so mad because it's like, Every New Yorker is always like, we have the best tap water. We have the best water. So then give me a fucking glass of it. Don't give me your Nestle bullshit that's ruining the world. Mm. Oh, oh, I thought I thought you meant like a glass bottle at the table. A glass bottle at the oh, table. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I was like, sorry, that's sorry. The, yeah, yeah, No, oh, I mean yeah. a plastic bottle. Oh, yeah. No, that, well, I thought that, that is. And what, yeah. like, what, what level of restaurant are we talking here? Like, is this. Okay, let me reframe this. Comedy clubs. Stop there giving me okay. bottles of water when I ask for a glass of water. Also, yeah. book me more. I'm so happy to be there. But <laughs> but it's so, it makes me, it's like unless I am in Flint, Michigan, or like a lot of Louisiana. Yeah. Like I know you have, go- I know you have water that's drinkable yeah. from the sink. I'm trying to be a better person in the little ways that I can control. And they are few and far between. I specifically said glass for a reason. Yeah. And let me tell you, I'm a I'm a monster with water bottles in terms of like oh I'm losing listen, these things. When we did when we did that show at Dynasty Typewriter, and at the end of the show, I was like, all right, I'll be in charge of like picking up the the amount because uh, they do that like they, there's the, a the fridge carton. in the back. They did the like carton milk or carton yeah. uh, uh-huh. water, you know the the cardboard yeah, yeah. water. A, a group of of six of us, there must have been. 25 <laughs> like half like someone had one sip and then put it down i was like guys like come on like they, there were so many of them and i was like this is such a that, waste that's an invention waiting to happen because you know there's the people who are like guys we're gonna put names yeah. we're gonna put everyone's initial on the bottle and that rarely works too there no. should be some kind of like, like a system like a tab like, or like a thing keep where drinking you're drinking me like it's in on, on. <laughs> that's 
your solution was like a naggy voice saying, keep drinking me, keep drinking me. Don't, Don't put me card. down. You Don't know you're going to lose this. Me. No, if we could get like whatever they put in the vaccine to microchip the water bottles <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah. that we know which one's ours. Yeah. We're getting there soon. Yeah. Um, that's a good, this has got to stop. Uh, let's, I guess let's go on to our blessing. Yeah. You better count your blessings. You better count your blessing. Russell, do you have a blessing for us? Uh, yeah, I probably is going to be my blessing a bunch of times in the next month. Uh, we had a lovely meal last night, uh, for our friend Chris. Caffera. Let me go first, actually. My blessing is <laughs> we. No, you can't steal I had an incredible mine. meal last no, night with my friend Chris Cafaro. Listen, no, this no, is no. a co-blessing. Okay, I guess. a co-blessing. We can both have it. We have a friend moving to LA. Yes, and uh, you, you, last night we had uh, a, a real wonderful meal, beautiful meal uh, to celebrate. Him. Four, four fellas, four fellas. Greatest burger I've had, maybe of all time. Oh my God, what was it called? That place? Uh, all ra- um, A U. Space R A V E O Ruval. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. I mean, I I don't know. I can't. I'm impressed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was incredible. We're just we're, 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 we're this is a sketch team. It's uh, there's more of us, but it's just four four guys, and yeah, we uh, we're gonna miss. We it. got drunk. I had some of your cigarettes. Yeah, which always feels fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, I I I really do enjoy. It makes me think occasionally. I'm like, I should give this a shot. A cigarette. I mean, I drunk. I do it, mm-hmm. but I do it like after Uncle Function or like when I'm with Douglas, and then now you, I guess. But um, yeah, we'll uh, now I'm mean, out smoke them here. You know. Yeah, maybe that could be our Patreon episode. Yeah. <laughs> we smoke a cigarette <laughs> live on air. <laughs> but it's such a sweet. We we like like this. Is how close we are. We shared we shared a root beer float. Yeah, all did. four of us. I mean, Aww. we sh- yeah we were f- straws. Straws. If one of us is COVID, we all got COVID. I wish definitely. you didn't have straws. I wish you guys all just like a little, like a little puppy mill. Just all stuck your tongue uh, in no, it. No, we'd like this in a like bowl, in please. A yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, it's a friend who's moving to LA. It's the first like really good friend of mine that's like yes. moving to LA. And yes. I'm like, I hope the friendship survives. But you don't know. Mm-hmm. That's what's scary. Yeah. I want it to, no doubt. But you don't know. You don't know. You don't know. I think, I think it will. But it'll be different. It'll be very weird. We built a structure in where we were out of necessity at least seeing each other three to five times a month, you know, mm-hmm. which is a lot for people yeah, in New York. For so, grown-ups. So for especially grown-ups. for, I would say, for men and straight men in their 30s, they're yeah. like hanging out together. The sketch team was like needed to make us. I think like there's a thing of like we got well we got to be doing something. Of yeah, 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 yeah. If we're gonna spend time. Yeah, we can't just hang out. So uh, very scared about yeah about that, but yeah. I I love him. So yes, that's, our that's our blessing. And it's too bad because Chris has never listened to the podcast <laughs> and will never hear these blessings. So they are for nobody. <laughs> They're for no one. Um, Ariel, do you have a blessing? I do. My blessing is that Comedy Central um, rarely makes any new content anymore. And they just rerun episodes of The Office. And I'm not getting Peacock. So I'm just so grateful to just any time. I especially this last, the last few days, just turning on Comedy Central and knowing that The Office will be on. And I don't really have to watch it. There's a comfort. Oh, my God. Just in the background. Speaking of The Office, this was what I actually meant to bring up earlier. Russell shared me, I think, one of the saddest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Do you not remember what I'm talking about? Oh, you sent it this, this morning. morning. Yeah, yeah. What was the company? I can't remember the company's it's name. It's like a company that like they digitizes like, paper or something. Yeah. And it's Angela. Uh, and what's the guy's and name? Kevin. Kevin. And it, they're like doing like mm. the lowest budget commercial you've ever seen. That's like a play off the office. But it like popped up on my Instagram as an ad and I was like, oh. And I was like thinking of that company of like, God, they must because it was seemed low budget. I was like, they must have spent their entire marketing budget to get these two to yeah. be in this like ten second commercial, you know. And it's it's just and she goes like, "Where's the paper?" He goes, "Where's the paper company?" And she's like, "We don't need paper anymore." And he goes, "Whoa!" And it's it's a hard watch. Do you? I love The Office. Me too. And I feel like sometimes I feel like it's seen. As hacky or or like dumb, I and I'm like that, I'm like wait a second I think it's that enrages genius. me because it, it like also it's only because of people are not responding to the actual content of the office they're not responding to season two or three like that are like some of the best te- like great TV 
they are responding to how much people love it. Right. So they're not responding to content. They're getting mad that a lot of people love it and mm-hmm. watch it all the time and they're getting mad that people quote it they're getting mad that they're not so they're not respond it's not the office's fault that this happened it's their res- their responses to people's joy uh, that they're mad that like that many people love it and it's like they're being feel like they're being subversive mm-hmm. by being like oh you like that i don't like that like like they're thinking that they're like <laughs> like above it and they're just trying to be subversive is my feeling yes. on that that's a great point you know but, and, yeah yes you know later seasons not as whatever but yeah. some of those early seasons are great. Did you continue after Michael Scott left? I did. I okay. I I understand. I I honestly I kind of like the later seasons. Not my favorite. Not as good as the early ones. Of course. Of course. Of course. Mm. But there is. I I really love. And I know this is this is my hot take. I really love what they did with Jim and Pam, and have them interesting. I love it so much that they had them have real marital problems based on, I mean, based on the fact that they had two kids, it got very stressful and Jim had a habit of not communicating these big life decisions with Pam and watching it in the earlier seasons. You're like, this is so romantic. And then you realize the practicality Mm. of that is of course, he's going to hide something big that's going to affect their marriage. And the way that they show that just because you're soulmates, right? Just because you're perfect for each Mm. other does not mean that like it doesn't take, it takes so much work. Relationships take so much work. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. And the quote unquote best couples will have to struggle through it. And I love that so much, yeah. especially as a married person who like, I feel like I have like the perfect person. It's still like a nice reminder to be like, we still have to talk. We still have to be check in with each other. What do you need? How are you feeling? Is there anything you need from me? Is there anything that I'm lagging on? Mm-hmm. So I, I genuine, and I, so I, to me, that storyline is enough for me. Diane knew it's enough. Yeah. 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 That's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Because you know, what, what could they have done with that? I mean, they had to figure out how to like still make it interesting because that was the crux. I mean, for me, like those moments when, when Jim kissed Pam end of season two, I mean like, one of the one of the <laughs> I mean you yeah. just like or the scene where they're playing her and like Jim picks Pam up and she's like yeah. put me down and you're like ah oh it's oh so my stressful God, it's, it's so, so good. St- yeah, yeah yeah speaking of throwing beer uh, Pam's ex throws beer yeah. threw that yeah. beer at the bar yeah yeah and then it was done <laughs> um, uh, t- I haven't watched in so long I feel like I'm giving it a rest so I can do like a real sure. me too, back me too. in but there are so many lines in that that are not memes that are brilliant I mean like yeah. the one that I was watching last night is when Jan is pregnant and Michael goes and sees her and he goes you cheated on me after I specifically asked you not to <laughs> So also, like, funny. Is so that the dinner one? The the dinner? No, no, no. That it's episode much, is one like, of the greatest episodes. Imagine, that one's really hard to watch. It's, it's hard to imagine Steve Carell doing anything ever again. That is, he is so good in that part. In that, it, it's, it really is That's why I, I, tremendous. I tweeted once where it's like, it feels like Steve Carell has now dedicated his life to never making us laugh again. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's just <laughs> like, so Steve funny. Carell's in so The Wounded serious. Veteran. Yeah. Steve Carell from The like, Office is in The Traumatized sad. Patient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I just one other shout out was was a uh, Pam uh, when Michael goes to the art show. Oh my god, oh. that always always. If I need a cry, that I watch that episode because that is it's my favorite moment. Like I remember watching that in real time and being like, you're thinking in your head, Jim's gonna walk in, Jim's gonna walk in, Jim. and when it was my it, they, it was such <laughs> a big shift for that show in the difference of like because you know people sometimes also gotta. They gotta be a UK fan or they gotta be a US fan. I like them both. They're very different. But I think th- the the biggest point I could ever say is the UK version was twelve things, twelve episodes. It couldn't have gone on because mm-hmm. it was no one wants to spend a hundred and whatever episodes with the Ricky Gervais character. Yeah, you couldn't. And th- they made a I thought you were gonna say with Ricky Gervais. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Um, you and they made a purposeful change in that thing. And that art show was a big like 
shift of like, oh, we'll make him this. And I felt like it was, you know. And it's just great cast. Holly, yeah. to think of like fi figuring out what's a love interest yes, for Michael Scott, that to me, believable. it feels like an insurmountable thing. And like, oh, I forget her name, but she is one of my favorite from that Amy role. Amy Ryan. Amy Ryan, favorite actresses of all time. I mean, she is yeah. so good in that. This has just become an office. Great yeah, show. Sorry, this is the sorry. new <laughs> office cast. We're a bunch of office hacks we're, over here. We're uh, hacky, hacky office fans. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, uh, oh, is there uh, anything you'd like to plug? This is coming out today. God today. willing. Probably later. Late. Today, but uh, uh, I I know I know one thing you, you can plug if it's still on the books. Uh, oh, no, okay, I'm gonna cancel that. Um, well, that was so. We, I can talk about that, yeah. Sure. Like it was so funny because he offered you a weekend. It was before. Yes, Friday the night. Thing. Friday night. He after my set, he offered me uh, to come back to feature in April. And I am. When you got that off originally, was it was it like, oh, good? Yeah, I was like, okay, cool. You know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to fill up my calendar. Yeah. And now you're gonna be like, <laughs> I want the Sebastian Maniscalco deal or nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. In, we'll in your mind, do you go? Do would you ever perform there again? I. You know, it's really hard for me to say. Initially, my gut reaction was yes. Because I'll go where, like, I love stand-up, and I'm, like, not afraid. Um, but now that I have, now that I am processing, I don't know that it's the best idea for me to go back there. Just because it's, like, who in that, who's really going to come out to see that show? Like, yeah. like what kind of people are going to want to come see me? Well, I could see it being a mix of, like, people that are, like, want to prove that this is not the way the area is mm -hmm. and, like, they like you and they follow you now and they want to blah, blah, blah. But I could also, to your point, it could be who's going to, like, could come and right. be angry about, you know, like. Sure. I mean, yeah, who knows? It, I, I wonder if this Halloween, every time you see a woman wearing a fake mustache, if you're going to have PTSD. <laughs> I, I mean, I know you're joking. I really don't know what's going to trigger anything. yeah. yeah. I, I just don't know yet. It's it like I just I haven't had time yet. And I've been back on stage. But, it, you know, I was at Gotham where it's like I couldn't feel safer at Gotham. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they have like security guards there who are also just like, yeah, yeah, yeah I have a gun. I don't need it. You know, like that's like who yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I just I just don't know what how I'm going to react. And I'm famously not famously, um, but historically pretty bad at processing my feelings mm -hmm. in real time. It mm -hmm. takes me a while to feel things. Um, so because of past trauma, um, so I, I just don't know. Yeah. And I'm trying to be okay with the fact that I don't know the answer to it. Well, then I guess follow you online for sure. Sure. Ariel underscore comedy. And I'm sure there will be some cool dates coming up soon. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, Russell, anything you want to plug? Follow me at Russell J. Daniels on Instagram. And then also, um, uh, November, oof, we have two shows on Sunday, November 11th. We have the downside. Make sure to check these, these alive. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, the 11th or the 13th? Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. 13th, well, well, 13th, you, oh, you have a 13th, we okay, have the 13th. downside. Yeah, yeah. So on uh, Sunday, November 13th, we have the downside doing a live taping. Where's that? That's at Sesh Comedy. Sesh Comedy at Club. Seven, six thirty. Six. Six. Six o'clock, Sunday, November 13th, Sesh Comedy. And then same, All these links are going to be in the bio. Yeah, and then that night, the thing. Uh, us, uh, Uncle Function w will be at Asylum NYC for New York Comedy Fest. I'm in Edmonton, Canada, October 20th through 22nd. I'll be in McKinney, Texas, October 28th and 29th. And then I'll be at Laugh Camp Comedy Club in St. Not Louis. Somewhere. Laugh Camp Comedy Club. Check, check, check the links in the description. I'm touring all over. Um, I, uh, I... I'm, I'm not lying when I say I am. I, th I do think I'm bummed out where I'm like, fuck, I wanted to work together more. And hopefully I'm sure we will he again. did say it off the pod yesterday yeah. to me. OK, there so you go. I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. It's true. Um, uh, so. Uh, so, yeah, if anyone's out there, uh, if you can drive and you can do a strong 20, oh please also reach out to me. I'm, oh I'm looking. This is the downside. One, two, three. Downside. You're listening.
listening to The Downside. The Downside. With John Marco Cerezi.